Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. In this video, we will be covering some of the basics of crafting in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Crafting becomes possible once you obtain the Herodric Cube from Act 2 and once you have perfect gems. These are the two main items you will need in order to begin crafting. Once you have access to that, you will also need certain runes, a jewel of any type, and a specific magic item depending on what you are wanting to craft. Crafted items have a very unique orange appearance to their item color and this makes them very easy to identify compared to all other items. The main benefits to crafting an item is that they can gain their inherent stats on top of the normal prefixes and suffixes that are available to randomly roll on gear. So basically, you will generate a rare item with a few predetermined stats that can stack on top of whatever rare item mods can also roll on it. And this will be dependent on a few things, mainly the item level and your character level. Here we will take a look at some of the more in-depth information related to this. And then we will look at the four different crafted item families and the recipes. One main thing to note is that another benefit of the crafted items is you can get stats on certain pieces of gear that are impossible to get in any other way. For example, cast rate on a belt, etc. And now let's jump into it. The four families of crafted weapons are blood, hit power, safety, and caster. And now we will cover the four families and their different recipes. Also keep in mind while looking at the inherent properties of the crafted items that these are in addition to whatever other prefixes and suffixes that the item can roll. So let's say that an item were to roll 300% enhanced damage, you would gain an additional 30 to 65% enhanced damage on top of that roll with the inherent properties of a blood weapon. The blood item family is one of the best, in my opinion, for a melee or ranged physical damage character all the extra life life leech and open wounds and crushing blow and deadly strike are going to be very good for your character if you're missing any pieces of gear and you can craft one of these to use uh, until you get maybe a really good in-game unique or something i would recommend it it will get you a lot of mileage for very low startup cost the caster items are also very good some of them can be best in slot most notably the amulet the belt can be comparable to an in-game unique with the cast rate it's the only other belt besides a very rare unique belt arachnid mesh that can have cast rate on it so if you need mana or cast speed this is a very good option for you as a caster if you need to hit a break point with faster cast rate etc the safety family is mostly going to be if you are missing some resists that you need to cap out you could craft one of the pieces here to get what you're missing. Also, some of the extra defense and block chance can be useful, but kind of is second rate to the blood and caster family, depending on uh, which you, whichever your build is. Those are probably the two better families, whereas 
the safety and hit power fall behind a little bit in terms of in-game viability. Here we have the hit power crafted items. Some notable mentions are the gloves for the knockback can be very useful on ranged characters like the Amazon, not so much on melee. Also the shield could be good for early game crafting as well as the body armor and the belt with the mana absorb could be useful depending on what build you're going. The rest of them are probably not the best, not really worth your time to mess with, but if you want to, then why not? But you'll have, you'll get better mileage from other crafted items or uniques or rare and set items. Some tips on crafting items. One of the easiest way to get magic items to craft with is to either gamble them or buy them at the shop. Gambling, they will have an eye level of plus or plus four or minus five of your character level. When shopping, they will have a range of plus five character level. When crafting the items, all properties on the magic item will be lost. It will not carry any of those over. It will generate random new prefixes and suffixes from the rare pool that can generate. You can look those up. I'll leave a link in the description. You can target certain prefix prefixes and suffixes based off the possible eye level of the item with the formula in this video. If you're trying to target certain things, uh, that can help. If you're not worried about that, then, you know, just craft and see what you get. The most notable eye level to keep in mind is for plus two skill amulets, which can end up being the best amulets in the game. You cannot craft those without an eye level of 90. So typically to get this, you will need to be mid level 90 as a character in order to have a chance at rolling a plus two skill amulet. And just to reiterate, it does not matter what kind of jewel you use, the rarity or the properties on the jewel, those will also be lost. When you are crafting, it's very specific, the item that it calls for when it says a helm or a cask, it does not mean any type of helmet or headgear, it specifically means the item that is, quote, helm, end quote, or, quote, cask, end quote. If it asks for a belt, it is specifically referring to the item that is labeled belt and not just any type of belt. So if you're trying to craft, craft a recipe and it's not working, most likely you have the wrong item type. Go back and double check the crafting recipe to make sure that you're doing it correctly. There are some recipes that call for a blunt item. I've got those listed here. There are also some recipes that call for a mace and I also have those listed here. Also take note that you can use the normal, exceptional, and elite version of items. If you're not familiar with those terms, the normal item would be your drops in normal difficulty and exceptional items you'll start to see towards the end of normal difficulty and throughout nightmare and elite items are really only going to drop towards the very end of nightmare and in hell difficulty. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed this introduction into crafting in Diablo 2. And as always, remember to give them the D.